Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 17.4 beta 3. iOS 17.4 beta 3 is out to developers and soon to public beta testers, typically by the time you're watching this video or the following day. And this update came in at 681 megabytes on my 15 Pro Max, was about the same size on all of them, around 700 megabytes or so, and Apple also released the second version of Vision OS 1.1 beta 2, and then other versions such as iPadOS 17.4 beta 3, watchOS 10.4 beta 3, tvOS and HomePodOS 17.4 beta 3, and macOS 14.4 beta 3. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about. The build number is 21E5200D. And as we get closer to a final release, we'll probably get a release that ends in the letter A, and then we'll get a release candidate in the final release. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, but we do have a modem update with 17.4 beta 3. So if you were having issues with connectivity, hopefully they've been resolved or improved. We'll have to check that out in a few days in the follow-up video. Now, as far as new features, well, beta one, we know brings new emojis, side loading, transcriptions to podcasts, Siri updates, and more. But with beta three, the first thing many people were greeted with is a new hello screen. Thanks to some users on telegram, my telegram channel. If we go to photos, this one was actually sent in and you may see a new hello screen with a little emoji or an emoji or your icon from your Apple ID. So that's something that's a little bit new in this update. I didn't see this on any of my devices, but many people are seeing this. Now this update removes a lot of features we had before. The first one has to do with Safari. If we go into Safari, here I have beta two on the left, beta three on the right, you'll see the actual bar at the bottom where you place the URL or search for something has shrunk back down to what we had before, where we can see a little bit of the remaining bar from a different tab. That's something I wish they would change. I kind of liked that it was a little bit bigger, but they've shrunk it back down with beta three. Also something they removed has to do with the stopwatch. With beta two, they removed this as well where we no longer have a live activity for the stopwatch. I hope they bring this back with the final release, but so far it's not here. Also, if we go under settings, then we go back to privacy and security, then scroll all the way to the bottom and go to analytics and improvements. We no longer have the option for wallet. So in previous betas, we actually had one for the wallet where if we go to the same place, again, analytics and improvements, scroll down, you'll see improve wallet connections. We no longer have that for some reason. If you have it and you turn it off, it will disappear. So for some reason they've removed it again, maybe it will come back a little bit later. There's also a lot of refinements and changes specifically with the code. One thing that's mentioned specifically has to do with Shazam. If you have Shazam, you may get some exclusive wallpaper in the future and it may be able to add it directly to photos. So that's something we're seeing. Also, we know of an update coming to the Apple watch, which works with the latest beta to allow you to remove or turn off the double tap gesture when you're using Apple vision pro that's under your gestures, double tap, and you'll see it here, but they've changed it to say Apple vision pro instead of just vision pro. Also, there's some new icons with TV, which has a little microphone there and a change in that as well. And also an update for cardio health with different icons. Now those don't seem to be active just yet. Maybe they'll be throughout here somewhere if you add a specific data point, but I haven't been able to find it so far where it looks like they may be redoing some of this. And speaking of cardio fitness, there's actually a new fitness challenge that starts tomorrow on February 14th or Valentine's day. Mac rumors actually posted about it. You can see Apple heart month activity challenge. It launches tomorrow and you can see some of the different activity updates here with badges and more. So that requires 30 minute workouts and then you're good to go. You'll get that badge. Now also other than that, there is no region that was mentioned in settings before that was with beta one. So if you go to settings and then you go all the way to the bottom under general and about again, there's no region settings. We'll come back to that a little bit later, but as far as other updates, vision OS 1.0.3 released yesterday, that allows you to actually use the vision pro. And if you forget your password, you can reset it without bringing it to the Apple store. Apple also released a new support document today, going over all the security features for Apple vision pro. You can see that here. I'll link it in the description, but it says Apple vision pro privacy overview, and it goes over points where maybe you're using optic ID and you're concerned it's going to leave the device. They actually say that it never leaves the device. There's much more about privacy here. And again, if you want to read this, I'll link it in the description.
As far as anything else, well, there is a new splash screen the first time you go into podcasts. So let's go into that on the other device I have on this update, give it a second. And you'll see here, it says transcripts and search in transcripts. So it talks about the new transcription feature where you can read along as the episode plays or view the full text by itself. Also, you can search within those transcripts. So that's something that's new, a little update where they're adding more and more splash screens. Again, they did that a lot before that sort of went away and now it's back. As far as bug fixes, the notification bug is still fixed. Thankfully, nothing's just popping in. So again, over and over, it won't pop in. Some people have said that if you slide to the right or slide to the left, then slide to the right, it will stick. I haven't been able to actually get this to happen. Then you swipe over to your camera and it will stay with it. I haven't seen this update here or this bug rather, and it's not showing up for me. Also, iOS 17.4 fixes a bug that's six months old or so, according to Quinn from Snazzy Labs. You'll see he posted this the other day where he said the new iOS 17.4 beta finally fixes a six month old bug in the home app that would display a two way talk button for every camera, regardless of whether or not the camera actually supported it. So they actually fixed this with the previous beta and it seems like 17.4 will fix that in general. Now, as far as the release notes, let's take a look at those. So if we go into the feedback app, we'll see if they've updated it. We'll go in and refresh here. And so far it's not updated in the feedback app, but if we go to the public facing website and if we scroll down, you can see today's releases. We'll go to view release notes and you can see the different things that they have still for known issues. Some of these were there before, but they've resolved issues such as the app store where certain app store product sheets will show a cannot connect to iTunes store that's been fixed. They've also resolved some issues with home kit as far as the live video cameras not working. There's still known issues with maps. They've fixed issues with stickers, sort of, where it says Memoji and third party might appear blank. I'll show you that in a moment. And then again, some more resolved issues, resolved issues with pass keys, podcasts, and more. So again, I'll link this in the description if you want to read through all of that. And it's great to see a lot of documentation this time around. Now, as far as remaining bugs, the wallpaper dimming bug is still there. You can see how these, this wallpaper gets much more vibrant right now. If I scroll home, it sort of dims right here. We'll do that one more time again, watch in this area right here. And it sort of dims after a second or so, or half a second. Also the emoji stickers seem to work sort of, if we go into messages within messages, if we add a sticker here, you'll see that my stickers show up, but I actually had this as a blank before where it didn't have the plus button. So this seems to be working a little bit better this time around. I went back into this, of course, just now, but earlier when I checked this, it wasn't working properly. So maybe give it a moment, see if it fixes itself as it should be resolved according to the notes. As far as other bugs, I haven't seen anything so far. And as far as performance, animations do seem to be a little bit quicker this time around, similar to beta one, where you can just quickly go through everything and it sort of pretty much keeps up, especially if you've gone into it before. Again, if we go into podcasts again, we got that pop-up screen here or the splash screen. Things seem to be very quick. Animations maybe have been sped up a little bit, but in general, everything seems very fast from promotion with scrolling, keeping up and being smooth as far as opening apps and everything else. So, so far it seems good. Of course, it will take a few days to know that and we'll check that on the weekend follow-up, but also the overall temperature of the phone seems to be a little bit warmer. So it must be processing a lot in the background. There may be a bunch of changes here, refinements. And so give it some time, maybe a day or two, see if it stops. It should in general, it's okay if it gets a little bit warm, as long as it's not so hot that you can't pick it up, it's really not an issue as it manages itself. As far as overall battery life, let's go into settings and then we'll go to general and about to check the cycle count. You'll see I'm at 106 cycles on my 15 Pro Max that I use regularly. We'll go to battery, battery health and charging. I'm still at 100%, but I do expect this to drop very soon. It's very typical. People are starting to see it drop already if you haven't seen it so far. And yesterday I had two hours and 33 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 46 minutes of screen idle time and used a little over 50% of my battery. So far today, I've had two hours and 25 minutes of screen active time and I've, I'm down to 64%. So it's okay. Hopefully it gets much better. A lot of people were saying it is getting better. So it does seem to get me through a day where beta one wouldn't beta two did a little bit better. Hopefully beta three is even better than that. But again, it takes a few days and we'll check that on the weekend. As far as if you should install iOS 17.4 beta three, well, if you're on beta two already, you definitely should test it. 
respond in feedback and give Apple feedback on that. However, if you haven't already, it seems to be pretty stable overall. Just make sure you have a backup if you want to try it out. As far as iOS 17.4 beta 4's release, or maybe release candidate or iOS 17.4 RC, we could see that as soon as next week. Last year we had iOS 16.4 beta 4, so we could see another beta, then an RC the following week with typically a release maybe around March 4th. However, if Apple has to comply with the EU and get this out before March, we could see an early release on February 26th. We don't know 100%, but we should know within a week or so. As far as the next betas after that, well, iOS 17.5 is in the works. It's been, been seen in analytics already by Mac rumors and others, and it looks like they're in the works and probably will come a few days after iOS 17.4 releases to the public. That's pretty typical. So we can expect that in a couple of weeks. As far as overall benchmarks, I did run them. I had to run them twice as it was quite warm initially, but we have 2,908 for single core, 7,112 for multi-core. If we take a look at the previous version, of course, this can improve over time. It did score a little bit higher than what we had on Saturday for both single core and multi-core. So again, it seems to feel a little bit faster. Benchmarks show that maybe a little, but it's hard to say based off benchmarks alone. So that's everything with iOS 17.4 beta three. And if I find additional features, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. If you've found anything else though, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.